Hi, and welcome to Healthy Life Hacks. I'm Jennifer Jeffries, the present day wise woman, a realistic naturopath coming to you from the surfing beaches of Australia. This podcast is for those who are wanting to really rock their lives and health and live from a place of prevention. Let's get into today's episode. I remember the very first time that I traveled to Taiwan and it was like maybe 18, nearly 20 years ago. I remember when I was there, I went out walking early one morning with one of my translators, a gorgeous, gorgeous friend. And when we were out walking, I was walking like an Aussie walks, which is kind of just walking. And my friend who I was with, her name's Xu Yen, and she's a beautiful, beautiful friend. She was kind of swinging her arms and like really shoulder height, it was, it reminded me of the army, shoulder high to the front, as far as you can in the rear, really moving her body when she was just going for a walk. Now, if I'm not surfing of a day, I go for a walk and that's my regular kind of exercise. But there was a difference. There was a difference on how she was walking. I looked across and went, what are you doing? Like, you walk different to us when you're exercising. She said, well, you know, I want to, I want to move my lymphatic system. And I went, wow. You, even when you go walking, you're walking for a purpose. It's not just exercise, it's exercise and consciously moving your lymphatic system at the same time. And I went, wow, you guys rock. They really do come from a place of prevention up in Asia. Welcome to podcast number 26. It is Jen and I am going to talk everything about the lymphatic system today. Why? Because your lymphatic system is your absolutely laziest, laziest body system that you have. And in fact, it doesn't even drive itself. You have to consciously move it, which is why my friend Xu Yen was consciously swinging her arms and that when she was out exercising. Now, I'm going to talk about all of that today. So first off, first off, why do you want to look after your lymphatic system? Well, bottom line, your lymphatic system is part of your immune system. And its job is to clear away uh, infections and help to manage body fluids. And when it's not working properly, your tissues and, and your, your body tissues and that get a buildup of fluids and toxins store. And it shows with things like puffy hands and puffy feet. And I'm going to talk all about that kind of stuff here today. So you may have heard of your lymphatic system, but you may not know much about it. So it's, it's bottom line kind of job is, yeah, it, it's meant to transport lymph, which is a, a clear, viscous kind of fluid that contains those infection fighting white blood cells through the body and its job is to protect the body from all those illness causing kind of germs and bacteria and viruses and fungi so it has a few jobs and the main ones are yep absolutely maintaining the body fluid levels that's it when you get puffy it's because your lymphatic system needs some help you didn't realize that, did you? Puffy hands and puffy feet. It's a real sign. And I'll talk about that in a sec. But it's also about helping your body to absorb digested tract fats and also for moving cellular waste. An easy way to think about it is that, just in layman's terms, is that it is the vacuum cleaner for your blood. Now, everywhere in your body that your circulatory system travels, your blood flows around your body, that it's followed right beside by your lymphatic system. And it's lymphatic system's job to mobilize and protect you from all the nasties in life. And it's literally pulling all that kind of crap out and transporting it back so your body can deal with it. And it's a system of one-way valves and they travel towards your heart. Now, it's really interesting. And it makes sense when you think of it this way, which is how I kind of understood it when I originally studied to be a naturopath so long ago. Imagine you've got a system of rivers and every now and then there's like a dam. Now, if that dam and that river system is clogged, well, that water flow starts to go really putrid and it eventually it swells and it can overflow and backflow and it just goes terrible. Well, our lymphatic system is exactly the same. In our body, everywhere where we bend, so I imagine wrists and inner arms and under the armpits and you grow, oh, I kick my table and your groin, <laughs> you shouldn't kick when you're on a podcast. Uh, <laughs> yes, this is real. So, uh, you know, your, your groin and your, uh, the back of your knees and your ankles, you've got over 400 lymphatic glands in your neck alone. It's crazy. 
So everywhere where we bend, mm -mm -mm -mm, bending my neck, bending my arms, whatever you want to do, that it's that bending motion that helps your body to drain the dam so the rest of the river can flow freely, flushing through the toxins and helping the body work the way it's meant to. And that's the thing. The lymphatic system is lazy. It's moved either with exercise or it's moved with massage. It just doesn't drive itself. And the normal thinking is, well, the classic kind of first sign that your lymphatic system is really sluggish is when you get puffy hands and puffy feet. You know, you get puffy to the extent like you can't get your rings off and, and people go, oh, no, I'm holding fluid. I'll, I'll drink less water. And then what happens is that the body goes, oh, oh, I need to put out even more lymphatic fluid because your body's dehydrated. What happens in our body is that, um, you know, lymph is, uh, if you think of it like a runny gelatin kind of consistency, it's more viscous than water. Now, when our body, when we're not hydrated enough and your body's trying to move things around through all your body systems, and the, the body goes, whoa, things just aren't flowing freely because you're not putting the water in. I'll put out more lymph to help your body, you know, your body systems move. But when that happens, lymphatic fluid is more, you know, almost kind of gelatinous than water. Now, just pure gravity means that it, it settles to our extremities. So puffy hands and puffy feet puffy legs, they are the, our extremities, that's a sign that your body is running dehydrated. And so when people go, oh, that's a real problem, I'll, you know, whether they take diuretics or whether they just stop drinking water, it creates a cycle where it just compounds and get worse. And the, that river system becomes toxic and gross and putrid. And that's where you start to create nasty, um, other ailments, and you are directly impacting your immune system. I want to talk about some ways that you can, you know, just simple kind of hacks that you can bring into your day-to-day -day life to help support your lymphatic system, to make sure that, you know, toxins and the nasties are actually being mobilized through your body properly. So number one, the very first one is we've got to move our bodies and regular exercise is the key for a healthy lymphatic system. But it's not like, you know, the way I walk, it's we've got to swing our arms. Now, when I walked the Camino in 2014, you know, I walked across Spain, I took hiking poles with me. And I remember, you know, I was walking through the heat of summer, 35 degree days out on the, you know, uh, up on the high plains of Spain and that. And, and meeting people, crossing paths with people, people everywhere, they were having, you know, the puffy hands, puffy feet and feeling gross through the day. And I was just like powering on, but I was using hiking poles. And I realized that using the hiking poles made me literally mobilize my arms more when I was walking. And that helped pump my lymphatic fluid. So when you're walking, whether you want to do like my friends up in Asia do that you swing your arms, or if it's a system for you to get a set of hiking poles, do it. If it's a system for you, you know, to get a set of hiking poles to remind you to really swing your arms forward and back, I promise it makes a difference. That's one. The next one is hot and cold showers. And alternating that water when you're having a shower because it pushes your circulation. Your lymphatic system just sits really close under your skin. So when you're, you know, kind of like uh, warming up and then contracting your skin, even that helps to make it pump. So hot and cold showers, alternate them. Summer's coming here now in the Southern Hemisphere, way easier to do cold showers than in the middle of winter. The next one is dry brushing. Now I talked about that a little bit when I talked about skin in a previous episode. You want to do dry skin brushing. It is so good for your health. Now dry skin and brushing, and I'll chuck in the show notes, a link to my favorite dry skin brush. But a dry skin brush, it needs to be a vegetable fiber brush. And remember, your lymphatic system travels toward your heart. So when you're skin brushing, you're skin brushing towards your heart. Really important. But if I was skin brushing my arm, I wouldn't start at the wrist. I would actually start in the armpit. And towards my heart, I would drain that dam first. 
Now you don't have to brush really hard because your lymphatic system is just under the surface of your skin, but you need to stimulate that skin. Okay. Now, if you haven't done it for a while, when you first do it, your it's like, ow, 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 ow. <laughs> but you get, as you start to really get your skin more stimulated, you, you feel it very differently. So it only takes a couple of days of doing that. And the best way to do it is dry before you jump in the shower. Okay. So you're draining like your armpit first and then your upper arm. So you drain the dam and then flush the river. Okay. Drain the dam, flush the river. Then after you've done that for you know, a minute, we well, don't even need a minute. It's really like 30 seconds or something on each part of your body. Then you would go to your elbow, your inner elbow. And so what you would do then is drain the dam, drain the dam, drain the dam. Okay. Firm, but gentle movements. And then flush the river, do the same thing on your, you know, your forearm, inner and outer forearm, drain your inner, your inner elbow, and then you're flushing the river, you're flushing the, that forearm, then you come to your wrist, same deal, so where you bend, you drain with your dry skin brush, drain the dam, drain the dam, drain the dam, and then on your hands and feet, we have these channels, okay, we naturally have these channels, if you just have a play with the top of your hands, you'll see your fingers naturally fit within these channels. Now, if you've got puffy hands or puffy feet, find these channels. And again, you don't have to push hard, but just by massaging gently, running your fingers down through those channels, remember to drain the dam first, really important. Drain the arm and then do this, okay? If you've got puffy hands or puffy feet, draining just those areas can make a huge difference to stimulating the lymphatic system to drain that puffiness. But remember to drink the water. Now it's the same when you go and do your legs you, and your body, you're coming up your body because your heart's here. But when you're coming to your neck, you go down because your heart, you're always going towards your heart, okay? So you dry skin brush on the way down. So dry skin brushing is hugely beneficial to your lymphatic system and ultimately your immune system's health. Don't go and buy those kind of um, uh, nylon-y mitt kind of things. They don't work. You want a dry vegetable fiber brush. That's it. So I've mentioned that we've got to drink water because if we're not hydrated enough, the body or well, the lymphatic system will naturally produce extra lymph. So we're wanting about 33 mil per kilo per day of body fat. So if you are 60 kilos, so 60 times 33 mil per kilo, so six threes are 18 plus the bit, you're really looking at two liters of water a day, but that's just standing still guys. That's not exercising or working in air conditioning or working in a heated room. And I, what I've found is most people need around that three liters of water a day. And when your brain's going, Jen, I can't drink three liters of water a day, I'll pee all day. Well, you, you won't, your body will get used to it, I promise. I promise it's easy. And the easiest way to think of it is three liters of water a day is about one glass an hour. Set an alarm on your phone and just that it goes ding every hour, you drink a glass of water. That's it. It's really easy. Okay. We also want to eat foods that are going to help to promote good lymph flow. So they are. Number one is water. You know, that's it. Cranberries. Cranberries are really good. So the dried, you know, shriveled up kind of cranberries, not talking about the sugary infused drinks. If you can get pure cranberry juice, that's great. Or otherwise eating cranberries, dark green, leafy greens are really good. All those, the darkest, richest colored ones, nuts and seeds, almonds, pecans, walnuts, you know, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, all of your nuts and seeds, they're really good too. Adaptogen herbs. I have gone on so much about adaptogen herbs. Um, but they're herbs that support your body to deal with stress. And what we know is that when people are stressed, so often they get immobilized and that just feeds the problem. We've got to get our body adapting to life, especially in times like now during COVID, so that we're supporting our immune system and all our body systems. We want to bring more spices into our life, things like our garlic and our ginger and our turmeric excellent foods to help support lymphatic system and seaweed you know like the nori sheets that are in uh, Japanese food that kind you know seaweed is really beneficial as well another food that we see people uh, having on you know in the western kind of world really quite quite often and I wanted to talk into it is apple cider vinegar now apple cider vinegar is really cool because one of its you know kind of uses is that it helps to bind to toxins so the body can help remove them easily 
And apple cider vinegar is also really rich in potassium. And that helps the body break up mucus in the body and clear lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are the little dams I'm talking about. Okay, they're the little collection points. So anything we can do to help them be clear, the less pressure on the rest of your body. So maybe a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar before your meal of a day. That's it. It's a simple, easy thing to do. The next way we can help the lymphatic system is with lymphatic drainage massage. Now, this is a particular massage system. It's called the Vodder Technique is the one I originally learned when I studied 30 years ago and, and I've taught it you know, widely around the world. It is a seriously cool massage system. Now, this is a really gentle massage. If anyone is, is kind of flogging you and making your skin really red and angry, giving, you know, trying to drain the lymph, guys are doing it wrong. It is meant to be an incredibly gentle massage that doesn't even get the skin red. It's not like a deep massage. It's a gentle, relaxing massage because your lymphatic system just sits under your skin and it doesn't take a lot to drain it, but it needs to be drained. And it's a particular sequence that does it, including draining all of those dams so the river can flow. So maybe you want to think about, you know, even seasonally, you know, like it's spring now. Imagine the start of each season, you went and had a, a lymphatic drainage massage. Put it in your diary. I promise it's worth it. And one of my absolute favorite ways to help with the lymphatic system is with a mini trampoline. Nowadays, they're called rebounders. And I remember learning about these, you know, 30 odd years ago. And, you know, they've been such a part of my life for so long. So your lymphatic system is a system of one-way valves that run towards your heart. So imagine on a trampoline, a mini trampoline, and on a mini, you know, those little round ones that generally you've now, you, you bought it once with great intention, now the dog sleeps on it and it lives out the back. Um, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. But if your kids have got a trampoline in the backyard, fantastic, get out there and play on it. But the thing you're wanting to do is uh, even the simple movement of just bouncing up and down, just bouncing up and down on a rebound. It's not like a great big bounce. It's just that gentle movement. It's like the, those one-way valves, they open, they close, they open, they close, they open, they close. And whether you make it as part of your routine, even if you're going to be brainless watching the telly, you bounce. I just want to put this warning out here first. Where if you haven't done rebounding before, don't go out and flog yourself and jump on that thing for an hour. You will probably be sick tomorrow. It will stir up too much too fast. The ideal amount of time is only 20 to 30 minutes a day, but work up to it. Start off with five minutes a day and do that for a week. Really just get comfortable doing that and then and bring it up and bring it up. And then you really only need, you know, that 20 to 30 minutes a day to be a really effective lymphatic system unclogger. It's going to really make it work. So how do we know that your lymphatic system is sluggish or clogged? Well, the first sign is how your fingers and your feet feel. If you're getting puffy, you want to look at your lymphatic system. Today, I want to leave you with four healthy life hacks. The very first one is to bring lymphatic support foods into your routine. So I rattled off a heap and you can go to the show notes to, to check them out again. And obviously, water is number one. That's it. Healthy life hack number one. Healthy life hack number two is to move your body. But when you're moving your body, move your arms, move your legs, like really move so that you consciously pump your lymphatic system and or get a rebounder really important. Healthy life hack number three is to bring some skin brushing, dry skin brushing into your life. And if you go to the healthy life hacks, I'll send you a link to my favorite brush that I use. And then healthy life hack number four is to bring some regular lymphatic massage into your life. It, like I say, even if it's seasonally, three or four times a year on the season changes, put it in your diary, go and have a lymphatic massage. But make sure you find a practitioner that is qualified in something like the Vodder Technique so that you know you're going to get the correct system. It's not just your local remedial massage therapist or sports massage therapist thumps a heck out, heck out of you. It's not that kind of massage. I promise it's not. It is a specific system. That's it, guys. Lots of cool stuff on the lymphatic system. And remember, your lymphatic system is an important part of your immune system. And especially in times of COVID, like right now, we want to be supporting our immune system. 
So that's for our lymphatic system. In our next episode, I am going to talk about how I bring self-discipline into my life, how I've been able to find discipline and how I can help you find your self-discipline too. I want to thank you for being here today. If you enjoyed my podcast, please let me know by leaving a review where you're listening in from. Every month, I draw one lucky person who leaves a review to have a free one-hour consultation with me. If you would like to receive a free copy of my Feed Your Body ebook, simply click the link in the comments below and join my newsletter and we will get that free ebook sent to you. I welcome your emails and you can write to me at podcast at healthylifehacks.com.au. Until next time, remember when it comes to life, live it, love it and get on with it.